This is the River Itchen and this superb pool behind me is the perfect location to talk about nymph fishing. I'm going to be using a 10 foot for a two weight rod with a nymphing line, two tiny little shrimps and I'm going to get up into that pool and see if I can't catch a trout or two. One of the keys to this sort of fishing is to be able to detect takes and that is what this setup is built for. I've got a super fine nymphing line, a meter of fluorocarbon tippet and two flies on board and I've also greased the bottom 12 inches of my nymph line with fluorescent orange grease to enable it to stay in the water a little bit higher but crucially to allow me to see the takes. I'm going to make some casts up into this lovely piece of water above and see if a fish comes up for one of these flies. Okay first cast and the beauty of this line is it's super sensitive. With two lightweight shrimps on board I can cast upstream and it will carry them and there it's a fish straight away. How about that second cast? A little tiny grayling. So what I'm able to do with this is prospect the water, break it down into chunks if you like, almost treating it like it's a clock face and you make casts in different parts of the river and with the line just out in front of you there you can just see when a fish takes one of those tiny little shrimps and all you get is a little dart, a little movement of that line away from you. It's super super sensitive and as you can see you can cast it quite a long way up into the pool. Now the key with this sort of fishing is that you don't use flies that are too heavy. It's almost like fishing a micro dry fly line this, it's like a, a zero weight or a one weight line. It will carry those nymphs along nicely and you can see how far up I can cast which is great. But the key to it is being able to see the takes. If you can't see the takes when you're nymphing then you're not going to set the hook into a fish. And it's just great fun, you get that same visual trigger that you get if you're fishing a dry because you're focused in on that bit of orange line at the end. Another little tiny fish, this time I think it's a trout. Yep, a little wild brownie. Wonderful. The way goes. So let's talk about breaking this section of the river down like a clock face. If we take the left hand bank as 12 o'clock we can move across the river in segments of five minutes or so until we get to the other side and that way you're covering lots of water wherever those fish may be lying. If I look at this pool above me you've got quite a lot of flow coming down the centre. We've got slacker bits of water left and right and I think that the fish will probably be sat in those left and right hand trenches down the two sides of the flow but I'm going to prospect up in this little piece of water using that clock face technique to see if I can find a fish. Well that's a much better fish and that prospecting has certainly worked. It's a little tiny grayling. In the net goes. beauties of this sort of fishing, covering the water, it really helps to be able to wade for a couple of reasons. One, you're really in touch with where you're fishing. You start to really understand the layout of the water and where the fish live. But the other thing is, it drops you down. So if you're standing on the bank fishing, you're skylining those fish and if you're able to get into the water and get down a bit lower, it means that you can be a lot more stealthy. And the beauty of this line is that you can plot your way through some quite shallow water. It's the kind of stuff where you're not absolutely certain that fish might sit, but do you know what? There are fish there so, so often. They're not always in the deep bits. And this can be great fun. Well, at last, a slightly bigger fish. In the shallowest of water that you would have walked straight past, it's not very big, but it is an itching wildy. A wild brown trout safely in the net. Perfect little creature. Barbless hook goes straight out. Isn't that wonderful? The other thing that this allows you to do 
is to plot those little channels that go between the streamer weed here, so ranunculus and other bits of weed, and you pick up fish like that. That's the biggest one I've hooked today. That's a cracker. Just below the bridge, just trying to keep it under control. The two weight cushioning those runs, really light hook length, and that's a trout as well, a cracker. Oh, wonderful stuff. Look at that. Safely in the net. You know, these little itching wildies are really special creatures. Just pop that hook straight out of him. He's taken the same fly again. It's not quite a pound, I don't think. But isn't that utter perfection? Look at the spots on him. What a beautiful creature. Perfect little opportunity for sight fishing. Active pod of fish in front of me. All competing. They're obviously hungry. Just watching the end of that line like a hawk to see if we can pick up one of these fish. Yes! Oh, that's a nice fish. The barest of touches on the end of that fly line then. Just the most gentle little pluck. And this is a good fish. Look at that, what a stunner. Beautiful creature. Absolutely fantastic. Not huge, but biggest fish of the day so far in the spring sunshine. What a stunner. <laughs>